Hi, welcome to our program. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, pathologist at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is the Digital Pathology Anatomic, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture with Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. Uh, it's a great benefit of membership. But uh, I'd like to share with you today a, a very quick case uh, that uh, comes from my uh, teaching files uh, going way back. Uh, and it involves a, uh, an older gentleman who came to um, attention because of some arthritis and uh, problems with uh, joints and developed some pain in his, uh, his hip um, and had to undergo a joint replacement. Uh, so uh, the story here actually uh, goes back uh, quite a ways uh, because apparently from childhood, the patient had a history of rather dark colored urine. Um, and uh, on examination, uh, he was noted to have some discoloration uh, in a couple of uh, somewhat unusual spaces. Uh, here, uh, notice in the sclera, sort of a dark uh, reddish brown discoloration. And on close inspection of his ears, you could see that there was this bluish brown uh, discoloration uh, underneath the skin. So this uh, was uh, highly suggestive of a uh, congenital uh, disorder uh, known as alcaptonuria or ochronosis. Um, but uh, the uh, story is, is really quite an interesting story. This uh, in, uh, disorder is related to a loss of uh, the uh, activity of this homogentosate 1,2-dioxygenase enzyme. Uh, which then uh, creates a block uh, preventing the digestion or metabolism of the phenylalanine tyrosine uh, uh, amino acids into their usual uh, metabolic products. And therefore, with the block here, this diversion uh, results in, a, in an accumulation of homogentistic acid, which can then be further metabolized and uh, result in benzoquinones uh, that create the uh, ochronotic pigment. Uh, now, this is usually the result of um, sort of polymerization of these uh, uh, um, uh, chemicals uh, that then uh, deposit themselves on uh, collagen tissues. Um, and that then can lead to uh, some of that discoloration that was noted in the skin, uh, as well as in uh, particularly in cartilaginous tissues. So uh, when uh, we received the uh, uh, joint replacement sample, uh, we should uh, not be surprised to discover that, in fact, there was this accumulation of uh, pigmentation in the uh, uh, chondroid tissues. And that's represented here with this very uh, distinctive uh, reddish-brown color uh, in the uh, cartilage, not the usual blue myxoid uh, tissues that we would associate with uh, articular cartilage. Uh, now, this was a, a, a fairly mature adult, uh, and you can surmise from that that <clears throat> the uh, lifespan in these patients generally uh, is not particularly truncated. Uh, they tend to live relatively normal lives, uh, although this uh, pigmentation uh, can uh, predispose to a number of other problems, including some heart difficulties, maybe valvular murmurs uh, because of deposition of the uh, uh, homogentistic acid into the, uh, car, the uh, uh, co uh, connective tissue of the heart valves. Uh, they are prone to uh, arthritic disorders because uh, this uh, cartilage does not have quite the normal elasticity. Uh, but also note here that this patient uh, had uh, survived to the point where they were really quite osteopenic, uh, which as you'll see here, there's a tremendous uh, loss of the normal uh, structural uh, bony lamellae that would be associated with a uh, weight-bearing joint. Um, and that uh, then can predispose the patients to, uh, um, or this patient to fracture or other uh, problems as well. So uh, alcaptonuria, as it's all, often called, as it presents in uh, early childhood, uh, oftentimes just with discoloration of the urine or the diaper and so forth, um, and this, when it presents in that early stage, this is usually due to an autosomal recessive defect uh, in the gene that codes for this uh, enzyme. Uh, 
Um, this results, as we've indicated, in pigmentation in the skin and soft tissues, uh, and then potentially arthritis. Now, they can also develop some stones, both in the uh, uh, bladder and other locations. Uh, generally, this is quite rare. So that's the unique thing about seeing this sort of a uh, joint replacement set specimen is uh, you're probably not going to see another example. But of note, there are forms of exogenous ochronosis, which uh, seem to affect only the skin, that can be caused by a number of fairly commonly uh, accessible chemicals, particularly some of the quinines or antimalarials, various acne medications, and uh, even hydroquinone, which has uh, been used in some uh, cosmetic uh, situations as a melanin inhibitor. So uh, the uh, potential to encounter this disorder in the skin is certainly not uh, beyond the possibilities for many of us. And particularly in some geographies where antimalarials may be used more frequently, uh, it might be expected to be encountered. So our uh, uh, question then is, how do we manage this disorder if it's presented in childhood? Well, Fortunately, as we've indicated, the complications are relatively few and it's not uh, life-threatening. Um, some efforts to restrict dietary in intake of uh, tyrosine, uh, as is done with uh, some patients with phenylketonuria and so forth, uh, have been attempted and have some degree of success, but that's a pretty rigorous diet to follow and uh, prone to a numerous uh, um, uh, irregard of the, uh, the dietary restriction. Uh, there is a medication out there. It's actually a, essentially a herbicide that uh, will block the activity of the hydroxyphenylpyruvate dioxygenase uh, and then potentially mitigate some of the accumulation of uh, the uh, homogentistic acid. Uh, but this uh, drug is not entirely without complications and requires very close monitoring. I have no experience with, with treating that. Uh, but I would be uh, certainly very cautious about any regimen that uh, promoted that treatment. So uh, no treatment may be necessary, um, and monitoring and uh, treatment of symptomatic uh, issues is probably the, the safest course to follow. Well, uh, that uh, summarizes this very quick uh, case, uh, ochronosis with osteopenia, uh, deposition on the uh, articular cartilages, uh, and we hope that you uh, learned a little bit about uh, metabolism and about uh, uh, the uh, vagaries of uh, orthopedic pathology in that regard. If you like that, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, just go on to the next one. Uh, but we do hope you'll subscribe so you'll catch future releases. Uh, we do small, short ones like this one, as well as uh, some longer ones from time to time. And we hope to see you again on the channel. So with that, thanks so much for joining me.